Welcome to the Flying Circus of Physics. Hi, I'm Drew Walker. I'm one of the physics professors here at Cleveland State University. Today, I want you to think back to World War II. You're a pilot for the RAF, and your job is to fly a small airplane into occupied France to pick up a really important defector. Of course, you're not gonna fly over during the day. You'd be shot down, you'd be seen, not gonna work. So you're gonna fly in at night, a moonless night. Now, maybe there's a little bit of starlight for you to see the ground. Maybe just uh, big obstacles like that. Of course, you could use your compass and flying time to try to get into proper landing area for the French resistance to hand off the defector to you. But how are you gonna see where that landing area really is? Well, the perimeter could be marked by little fires. Yeah, that's it. No, that'd be a dead giveaway. You and the fighters would both be dead. Um, when you were walking out to the airplane, your captain handed you a flashlight. Maybe you could use the flashlight, shine it down, see the ground. No, so little light would come back up to you, you wouldn't be able to see the ground, the landing area down there. Oh, maybe the resistance fighters could, around the perimeter, hold up mirrors to bounce some of the light back to you. Yeah, that's it. No, because how did they know what angle to use to get the light back to your eyes? They can't really see your airplane. Well, it turns out that the resistance fighters knew a lot of physics. What they did is they built a retro reflector or a corner reflector by using three perpendicular mirrors. This has the property that when you send light into this arrangement, the light reflects two or three times and then comes back to the source perfectly if the alignment is perfect with 90 degree angles. Well, the resistance fighters didn't have perfect alignment. I don't have perfect alignment here, but still enough of the light would come back to your eyes there in the cockpit that you could see the perimeter and where to land. That's it, they knew physics. This is what you're supposed to do. You take the flashlight that your captain gave you, put it near your head, shine it down on the landing strip as best you can, and all those little retro reflectors will send light back to your eyes, more or less. And you can scan it around to pick up all of the retro reflectors so you know the extent of the landing strip. That way you can land safely. Now you've seen retro reflectors before when driving at night because a lot of runners will use retro reflectors. This actually has embedded in it the corner reflectors that I had with the mirrors on the table. This will send light back to a driver to warn that the jogger, the runner, is there. So for safety reasons, this is worn at night. You can also find retro reflectors on every stop sign so that the light will go back from a car to the driver's eyes to make the stop sign visible. They use a powdered little spheres on the stop sign. I've gotten some of that grain and I've put it on here with glue to spell out FCP for flying circuits of physics, of course. And you're getting retro reflection from those little spheres. Here I've got some transparent glass spheres. Light will retro reflect off of them. Some of the light will reflect from the front surface of a sphere. The light that penetrates the sphere will also reflect off the back surface. Both reflections come back toward the flashlight, a retro reflection. Let me try a laser, a very narrow beam going in. I can illuminate a single sphere at a time and I can see the reflection off the front surface and off the rear surface coming back toward the laser. It's psychedelic. Try a laser. Narrow beam. Illuminate. Laser. Laser. Well, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again next time on the Flying Circus of Physics. In the meantime, when you're driving at night, look for all the retro reflectors because they're everywhere. That's because physics is everywhere.